It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obiuchi, and thanks a lot for joining us um, on another amazing show. Yes, uh, last Sunday we were here with uh, a lot of hope and excitement for the Super Eagles. Unfortunately, things didn't particularly pan out as we wanted, but um, we continue to wish the Super Eagles all the best. We know that uh, the future looks very bright for them, and we know that uh, only great things are going to happen for that team and for the country. Politics is, of course, still very heavy in the land. Uh, lots uh, more uh, presidential candidates continue to declare. The debate about where it's going to be zoned to continues. Um, we are keeping our fingers crossed that the year most importantly stays violent free i mean politics and elections are a part of democracy and we get excited when that happens but we just hope that things can stay as peaceful as possible um but just to lighten things up a bit we're going to be starting the show this uh, day a little differently talking about um uh something funny uh, i have a very special guest here who has taken social media by storm in the last couple of months uh with his amazing skits and uh here with me uh you might know him as mr funny but it's chukwame kaimano Thanks for being here today. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and Happy New Year. Yeah, same to you. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very fine. We thank God. Um, just let's take things back a bit, you know, uh, talk about, you know, where you appeared from. And I say appear very loosely because for a lot of people, it just looks like you just showed up <laughs> oh, <laughs> in yeah. our lives on our phones and have continued to do amazing things. First of all, wh where did you, I mean, how did this start for you? Okay, um, first of all, <laughs> you know, the way they always say that we just came out from nowhere. Yes. Like, there's no one that came out from <laughs> no nowhere. No one appeared from nowhere. <laughs> I started uh, 2015, 2015 from Portacourt. So I relocated down to Lagos 2019. So I think maybe my coming to Lagos, that's because I see Lagos as the main base for entertainment. Yes. So maybe when we are in Portacourt, they don't see us much like that. But coming to Lagos, maybe that was where the exposure and new knowledge and ideas came yeah. forward. So, so before 2015, you were in Port Harcourt, were you doing comedy? Yes. Stand-up or what stand kind of comedy? Stand-up and online comedy. Okay. But I started more stand-up comedy, because that was the one I'm very good with more. Yeah. Yeah. But um, there was a way the industry over there is. So we need to widen it a, a bit. So I had to just adopt the online comedy into the whole stuff. Because yeah. I think comedy is comedy. Exactly. So added to, but the online comedy picked for me. So, so before 2015, what were you doing? What, did you always know you wanted to do comedy? Mm, did you always know you were funny? I've always been a very funny person. But I never knew comedy can pay. Yes. Or comedy can make someone, let me say, popular and other stuff. I was just a normal street boy that would go to where they are playing ball and sit with them. They won't choose me to play the ball. But they because always you want can't me, play or what? Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> they always want me to just sit around and crack you know, crack them up. Crack them up about everything that's happening on the field here. So that was just here until I got admission into Uniport. From there, my customers were like, guy, try this thing now. So <laughs> that was there. I just said, okay, let me try. What did you study in Uniport? I studied linguistics and communication studies. Okay, so nothing to do with theater. Uh, I was given a change of course form to come to theater arts. At when what I, point? Um, that was my year one when we did a board course, Star 100. So I was given a change of course from come to theater from the HOD then. But I told the woman, my dad does not support theater because my dad wanted me to be a lawyer. Okay. Not even that linguistics or anything. So, so you're using linguistics to pass time so first? Yes, and you he was very law. angry I'm doing linguistics at first because he needed law, nothing but law. So from, that was when, for me, reports, school shows, from school shows, found our way here. So you were doing stand-up in Uniport? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes, yes. So uh, how did you, did, did your father find out about this comedy side uh, while you were in school? I was hiding it at first, but he knew it from my final year. My final year was like, ah, I, I used to see you. So that's what you're doing in school. I said, yes, that I was afraid at first. I said, okay, no problem. But just know that you still study law. <laughs> just know, I said, okay, daddy, I'll study. So before I located down to Lagos and... When money started coming, he forgot about law. <laughs> <laughs> what does he think of it now? <laughs> oh, my father does not, not concerned with law again. Yeah, making a living. Yes, he doesn't know law again. No more law. <laughs> <laughs> so you were doing stand-up. Yeah. At what point did you discover this online side of you? Of mm, online was uh, 2016. 
2016, yes. Then we had the likes of a Cracks TV, Funny African Peaks. Then they were like the Tunde North of now. Yeah. Yeah, this time. <laughs> so. Okay, so when you moved to Lagos, um, did you move here to, was it to continue online? Did you want to do stand-up? Did you want to get into TV? What was exactly your mission when you moved when here? When I came to Lagos, 2019, early 2019, first of all, I was trying to get into some shows for the stand-up aspect. But it was very hard. It was very hard because you need to know one or two big names before you can get those slots. But when I, I saw the way it was very hard, I had to just step back, then focus on my online comedy, stay in my house, shoot my videos. Because I, was, I felt the media is open for anybody to get what he or she is looking for. Very true. Yeah, so... It worked for me. I still go for my stand-up shows. Like my last show in Port Harcourt was a stand-up comedy show I did. It was just so, so. so. So I want to know, what's, how do you get inspired to do a lot of these things? Because we just saw a clip there now. And first of all, one of the, I think your biggest selling point is your facial expressions. Oh. And how you, you know, before you even say anything, but sometimes people are already <laughs> laughing. You know, was that always something you thought, you knew you had? And that was something I knew I had for long. For long, but I never knew how to put it into skit making. It was 2018. I did a skit, then I tried to use the facial expression more, and it worked. I observed something, the comments were encouraging. I was like, I think I need to try something hard on this. Yeah. Then ever since then, I've been using it, and it's working. So how do you get inspiration to do sort of what you do, the content? Is it things that happen to you, or do you just yeah. make them up? I, I do more of observations. I'm a very observant person. Understand? So um, wherever I go to, <laughs> I learn to There's keep a story quiet there. and look out for something. And always I get something. Yeah. Understand? So I don't think it's something it comes in anytime I want it. So I'll make use of it. Explain content creation to us, because for a lot of us that watch it, you know, people just say, oh, this guy's funny, you know, this looks interesting. It's maybe sometimes one minute, sometimes three minutes, depending on what it is. But how hard is it to come up with these things? Because you guys make it look easy. Mm, it's not easy. First of all, I would say it's not easy. And big shout out to every content creator out there. It's not easy because um, content creating is something, <laughs> if you're not strong enough, yeah. you'll be out of the line. <laughs> Because you need to think outside the box. We have so many content creators, understand? So, um, and we have people that think alike. So your ability of being different stands you out, understand? And when content creating goes up, is the let me say um, your consistency. Yeah. Consistency keeps you in the eyes of the people. It helps a lot. It might not be funny at first, understand? It might not be funny, but consistency and hard work. Here's content creating, and man, content <laughs> creating is hard. It's very hard. Uh, you know, the fans don't see the aspect of yeah. um, the working part. They, they always see the result. Yeah. They don't see that. And it just looks of, very easy. If it's, ah, this guy, ah, but I don't know what will pass through, yeah. understand? So how do you know something is going to be funny? Like when you shoot something, are there people you will sort of say, okay, check this thing out? Yes. Or do you put it out and just hope I don't just put out the best? contents like that. No. I don't put out content. It's very risky. <laughs> Have you ever put out something and people were just like, this one no enter? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've, I've done something like that yeah, in the morning because I'll say, okay, let me post a video by 9 o'clock. Then nobody's around to ask a question to show. Yeah. Sometimes I'll send it to my friends on WhatsApp. They're not online. I'll be like, guy, ah, nothing they happen. Just put this thing. Let me put this thing. And I'll sleep off. <laughs> what I do, I'll do off my phone. I see. You don't want to see. Yes, I don't want to see first. Then when I come online, I check. Ah, comment are crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's good to go. Yeah. So, so but most times I give it out to people to judge for me. Uh, any mistake and any mistake I always want to correct. Yeah. I always want to correct. Because I feel um, you can't know everything. Yes. Do you think it's harder than stand-up? Or is stand-up harder? Because stand-up, you're in front of a live audience, sometimes 15, 20 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on what you want to do. And you're getting instant <laughs> feedback. 
first but of content all, creation, of course, <laughs> takes a process. What do you think is harder? Um, first of all, I would say the end product yeah. of the two is laughter. Number one. But um, a stand-up comedian, first of all, you need to be bold. You need to be bold. Like you never can tell the audience you're going to talk to. So we have some stiff audience. <laughs> we have some audience that they would never laugh. You understand? It takes your courage to just go in and do your thing and come out. So content creating, man, to me the two is hard. <laughs> no one is. No so do you think separate. do you think content creation is a career? now because oh. like you said with your dad for example he's slowly <laughs> he's understood it now maybe because you're making money you're not asking him for money that's fine <laughs> but do you think because a lot of people still feel like what are you even doing in this place if instagram goes off now what's going to happen to you people you know do you think that's a, an actual career path um first of all <laughs> first of all i want to say thank you to the social media <laughs> thank you very much god bless you <laughs> oh man content creating it's a good job, first yeah. of all. That's what I have to say, man. It's not only Instagram. That's the mistake people fail to understand. It's not only Instagram. We have the Facebook. We have the TikTok. Right now, I can boldly say TikTok is pulling it. Much more even than Instagram. Yeah. And we have the YouTube. Understand? Instagram is just um, is the main base because it gets to meet the higher audience there. But there's a massive audience in Facebook. Understand? And Facebook is the one that is even monetized. Not even the Instagram. Yeah. Understand? And the YouTube is monetized. So to me, if tomorrow Instagram should not be there again, <laughs> I still have my Facebook that will pay me and my YouTube that will pay me. So content creation right now, man, to me it's a career. It's a career. It has helped so many people. Do you plan on sort of moving this into like mainstream Nollywood, for example. Because a lot of people, we've had, I've had a few content creators here who have come on and, you know, they've said that some of them went into skit making because they, they've auditioned for movies several times, they didn't get roles. Is this something you're trying to transition to? No, me, I've never point? gone for any audition before. <laughs> I've never gone for any audition. But um, most movie people, they are calling me for their sets. I said now, bro. I know, I went for one um, in Abuja last week. Understand? So, but most times, some skit makers, I can see most of them. They are pulling up some movies. Understand? Some on YouTube, longer stuff. So, <laughs> I think um, only we should look out for us also <laughs> because we have something to offer. Yeah. So, it's something you don't mind doing? I don't mind. I don't mind. Yes, yeah. I don't mind doing it. I'm okay. just looking at um, <laughs> one of your skits now. And, um, I want to talk about, you know, the Ni Nigeria as a whole. You know, we've, we went through a phase last year up until this year when Twitter was banned. You know, we've, we've, we, have, we live in a country where you never really know what the policy is going to be tomorrow. And people tend to rely on a lot of people like you to take the burden, mm -hmm. you know, of just the pressure of living in a country like this off of us. Um, what are your thoughts on the sort of entertainment as a whole and where it's going and what government should be doing, you know, with entertainment? Um, first of all, I think um, entertainment and, um, let me see, entertainment in general is the best thing Nigeria has right now. <laughs> yes, right now. But I don't until know... Super Eagles, but uh, that was until we'll, last... We'll talk that one <laughs> They later. will come back. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, entertainment is the highest thing I can say I'm proud of my country. So, but I don't, I don't see the government looking into that aspect. They don't see it as anything. So, but instead, um, they go against the entertainers. Yeah. You know, so trying to manipulate on us some kind of rules and regulations, the police, all this stuff. So I think the government needs to calm down and come into terms with the entertainment bodies because so many things are going on yeah. that they don't know about. You understand? So many things that, well, that could help this country. Yeah. yeah. Who are some of your favorite people in, the, in your industry now? I want to call it content creation or comedy content creation? Because there's a lot of you now. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes people just wonder, 
these people are everywhere. How, I mean, for you, for you to have broken out of that um, mass of I don't, people, I don't people have any you... favorite content creator. Yeah. I only have um, favorite Nollywood <laughs> actors. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you have any favorite content creators? Um, I don't see anybody there I look up to. Okay. So, Even before people, you started. Yes. There are people I, I, I sit down to watch, which is Mr. Ibu. <laughs> You People compare both of you a lot. Yeah, Not because guy, you look alike, yeah, but just guy, your facial expressions I, and I, how... He, I watched that guy from a primary school. Yes. Uh, he's, he's an embodiment of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ibu Chasinoje. Okay. Chasinoje Osofia. Osofia Francis Odega, Victor Sago. These guys are guys that I miss a lot. Yeah. Like, in my house, that, those are the only people I watch. I go to YouTube, some local... I still look out for movies like Atenga, Atenga, Okwa. Those are, those are real comedy. Yeah. You know, so, uh, I don't look up to anybody. So that means I there's Nollywood know. in your future, maybe. Ah, I love <laughs> the, the former Nollywood, not now. Not the, what's, what's wrong with now? For now, I don't see. <laughs> Why? Um, it's not sweet anymore. The scripts are not. Yeah. I'm not feeling the scripts. So why don't you produce yours? <laughs> <laughs> Man, oh, I don't have that finance for that. Let me focus on, yeah, on my surface. Yeah. Let me handle one or two. But those guys, <laughs> I give it to them. Yeah. Yeah. So since talking about you know content creation, um, there's always a controversy that comes up a lot. in the last year at least. You know, I see a lot of people who do content creation on social media. They put up pictures of oh, brand new house or brand new car. People keep asking. Ah, is that how this money is being made in this thing? I feel like every month or every two weeks, I see a new <laughs> skit maker on social media posting a brand new house or a brand new car. <laughs> Do you find people... Because people always question, ah, now they na de, na <laughs> so na de make the money. So explain this thing to us. Okay, from my <laughs> own point of view. Okay, um, I see so many things people do comment and see, like, some people be like, ah, these guys are into fraud, mm -hmm. other stuff. First of all, I don't understand how I'll be doing fraud. Then I'll be consistent with my career to this extent. It won't work. Con that's why I said, first of all, content creation is a career now. It's paying very well. Yeah. Why many citizens of this country don't know about it? Is because of the government, first of all. I just wish the government can just put an eye into it and invest into it. You see massive talent mm -hmm. that are still behind. So content that content creation right now eh, is paying very, very, very well. How much do you get paid for a post on the okay, average? Okay, if I'm to do an advert now, I get to, to be paid 1.52 million naira. For a post? Yes. In a month, I get, let me say, um, five adverts. That's Try. roughly... You go do give away before you come out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Um, that's roughly, let me say, 10 million. If okay. God brings... On the, a very good month. Thank you very yeah. much. So, a reasonable person should invest, should put things in place. Because yeah. um, there's fame, and there's life after fame. You understand? There might be that peak moment, and there will be a moment when the investment will speak for you. Mm -hmm. so, but some people will do the flashy. Some people have so the money So what do you now. invest in? Me? I invest in properties. Okay. Yeah. So I buy things. I have cars I, I bought, yeah. but not every time we bring it up on the media. <laughs> not every time. So that's just it. It's paying very well. So it's not the Sabinus that we are seeing that is, uh, that is the real guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you mean... It has helped so many youths. Yes. But I completely agree with you, but yeah. I also understand people trying to question, to understand. That's the thing. You know, how, how it's so lucrative. That's the thing. Know? Like YouTube now. Yes. Let me say for YouTube now, that people YouTube pays roughly 15 to 20 million naira every month. Yeah. Nobody knows about it. So tomorrow, if that person should buy a house, he says it's fraud. Mm -hmm. No, now. <laughs> no, now. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. Okay. Well, good luck. Congratulations on everything. I mean, you're doing amazing. You I feel much. like I see a new skit from you every time I put on either Instagram or Twitter. Or you're just constantly, you know, churning out material. I think Thank that takes much. a lot of talent. Congrats and good luck with everything. I hope to see you in Hollywood soon. 
<laughs> the opportunities there are our gravity. Definitely. We'll take a quick break now and come back. Please don't go away. <laughs>